Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Port Adelaide Melbourne game in which Max Horn went to the rescue for me with a 146 to captain of the side, well VC the side in both formats. And boy did he go off, he went 146 in AFL Fancy and 177 in Supercoach, so I captained him in, well VC'd him in both and had the C on bot, I've changed that already to loophole players. Um, and yeah, really, really happy with that from uh, Maxi Gorn, and that was exactly what I wanted from him. And yeah, th so that's the big, big one. I've captained my highest scorer so far, and only really Bont or uh, um, or Isaac Heaney I can really see going over that. But when you get a 140 scorer, it's a really, really, really good uh, captaincy score, as it really helps to just, um, especially in best 18, if you do have bad scorers, um, I guess it helps to uh, really elevate those bad scorers. Um, so anyway, before we get into this video, uh, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the recap. So, Willem Drew 104. Uh, yep, he did his thing. He was on, um, who was he on? Was he on Viney? He was on Viney, actually, and put the tag on Viney. It was a weird one. He, he fluctuated, I think. Um, I think it was a pretty hard tag on Viney. But also he went, I think for moments, probably about 10% of the game, he went also to Oliver, or they ran someone else with Oliver. And yeah, so it wasn't the uh, worst with um, Viney, uh, with Willem Drew and Viney, but um, that matchup obviously generated a lot of points, but it probably did stifle Viney a little bit. But I mean, it was Neil Pollan that really came out and showed them that um, if you can tag one of us, you can't tag the whole team. Soldo, a 103 against Gorn. Um, he basically just beat up on, um, on, uh, on Van Royen. Van Royen, I don't think, got a hit out. Uh, if we look here at Van Royen, where is Van Royen? Van Royen, he got one hit out, um, he got one, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, five hit outs, I believe. Um, yeah, he got five hit outs, 31 points. It wasn't the best for him. But anyway, he, um, yeah, Soldo just dominated that matchup when it ever, uh, when it ever occurred. Rosie, a 99, he was one of the most inefficient 99s I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, he got his points, Rosie, but it wasn't, um, the greatest. And I mean, he is still, what's Rosie averaging? So Butters is averaging 101 and Rosie is averaging, um, 108. So I would say... I would say they're about even um, of where you want them to be. So, um, yeah, he is doing his um, his job, uh, Rosie, and being slightly better than uh, than the likes of Butters. Wines, 88, he did pretty good. He did his job for me in um, Supercoach, I believe, with a 96. I mean, it doesn't really help as much compared when uh, Nick Martin went off and I wanted to get Wines. Um and I should have honestly done that and then gone uh, with Clark as well because Clark would have been a much better scorer than uh, Wengen and Malira. That probably would have gotten me, netted me another about 60 points, something like that, 65 points. But um, I think it was the more, it was a more logical decision to go and stick with Wines um, than to go with uh, Nick Martin given the break-evens. Um, Houston uh, did all right, and Butters, 79, he really did nothing in the first quarter, and he was fine after that, so it was just a poor first quarter and didn't really have one of those 30-point or 35-point quarters to catch up. Um, did amazing in the start of the, you can see here, in the start of the third quarter, he got, um, what is that, 6-3. So he had 24 in the first um, seven minutes of the quarter for uh, the third which, yeah, just shows his power, but he couldn't really turn that into a 40, point, uh, 40 45 point saver in the in that quarter. Travis Boak started on fire and then just did nothing outside of that. Radigalia um, probably had the biggest stuff up of the game with that uh, goal line um, non-save. But yeah, he was all right, uh, but not fancy relevant. Mead, 69, is tracking along all right for those people that have him. Dixon, Burton, Finlayson, Rioli, Marshall, Bergman, Alira Lear, Lockie Jones, Thatcher, Burn Jones, for the people that jumped on Farrell for some reason. Yeah, he sucked. And this is why you don't jump on the secondary guys in the um, in their roles because um, Houston was the only one that really shined off that halfback for Port. Even Burton, for those people that would have jumped on him, he put up a 59, so Farrell's cash then is dead. McEntee, Burgoyne, and then Francis Evans subbed out. And then for Melbourne, you have Max Gorm with a 146. And it honestly could have been more for Max. With the way he was playing, 
you just saw here, look at all the hitouts he had. He had 50 hitouts in the end, and he could have honestly ended up with, I think he also missed a, a relatively um, gettable shot as well, so he could have ended up with a 150 bomb. He could have also ended up with, a. he had a couple of dumb free kicks as well um, that he could have na uh, gotten out of his game. And then I think he also had a couple of, um, I think a couple of uh, just uh, ones where he could have actually got the disposal away. I think he also missed out on a kick as well, somewhere in here as well. He missed out on a, um, I believe, a kick in the first quarter that he could have, uh, that would have gotten him up to around about the one, um, it might have been actually added at the end here or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, he could have ended up with a 155, 160 score, which would have been absolutely huge in Supercoach, but um, it would have been like a 190 in Supercoach. But he did his job, and he's going to be rising to now. He beat his break even by 63, so he's probably going to rise 50k to 940k almost. And he could be well on his way to 1, uh, 1 million, and that would be huge. Neil Bullen, 105. Oliver, 94, so the Neil Bullen, just, he's not going to produce that regularly. Oliver is getting cheaper and cheaper, but you can start to see that the fitness is getting there, and it's turning, and he's he's almost doing preseason over um, in the actual game. So I wouldn't be surprised if post-buy, Clayton Oliver is a buy, but um, I just need to be careful about their buys. They have 14, so that's not too bad. So yeah, I may look at Oliver in about three weeks' time, um, when his break even starts to settle because he is starting to get there. He's just starting to click it over and you can just see the wheels starting to turn with him and he's starting to get back to the Oliver of old. So yeah, I'm I'm considering him and starting to work him into consideration, but you've got Flanders. You really have Flanders, Powell, um, uh, Flanders, Powell, Marshall that I've sort of got to, and Dacos that I've got to get before Oliver. So that's already four rounds that I've got to sort of wait and maneuver around to, to wait to get Oliver. And that sort of lines up with my thinking that he's probably going to have another two. He's got another game. Um, he's got another two games, then the bye. And then I'm probably going to have to get him up in round eight or round nine um, when you start to upgrade that midfield, which is around that timing where I'm going to have pretty much my forward line and my back line almost set. And it's just going to be the midfield that has to uh, get fixed up. But yeah, Oliver is starting to turn the wheels, as I said, and get into consideration. Viney, 91, um, he was pretty good. Trent Rivers, I thought, was actually pretty good. Um, I thought I saw him more for an 87. Petrarca, an 83, a very, very down game from him. Um, and he's going to start to lose some cash as well. Kane Chandler, an 81, probably taking the role that uh, we want from Billings. So no thank you. Um, please give it back to Billings. But I will be gone off Billings this week anyway. Um, Jake Lever, I'll cross both formats, by the way. Um, Jake Lever, he did all, he did all right. Um, gave up, I think, a silly free kick somewhere here that cost them a goal. But he was really, really instrumental. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was a huge super coach score. Um, it was a 103 and super coach 74. So that's a massive split. Um, Sparrow, Bro uh, Brown, Langdon. I was about to call him Brogdon because I saw Brown and Langdon. That's a that's a combo. Salem Hall did all right. Um, stole a little bit of um, points off of Howes, who had a shocker. Um, Petty Windsor, McDonald. As you can see, Windsor again just showing that rookies don't necessarily always score. Mick V, uh, Fritch, Royan, and then Billings. Yep, nothing in the first and then got subbed out in the last. Really, really annoying and really, really just... Wish he'd scored like a 60. Just take a 60. I know it's not going to count, but it's just... Um, thank God for best 18, basically. Let's put it like that, because he was a killer, and I'll be getting him out of my side for either Powell or Flanders, depending on what maneuvers I want to make. Um, but yeah, really, really sucks. It probably means I have to go to Powell, but I'm not too, too worried about going Powell over the likes of Flanders um, at the moment. But we'll wait and see on that one. Um, and then Howes as well. I'm glad... Um, well, I pretty much put the curse on him saying, oh, he's a great rookie pick. He's done really, really well. And then he goes and pulls out a 23. Uh, with the negative 13 break, even he's still going to rise like another 30K. But um, hopefully we see him rise because I do think he's the guy that I'm going to use to trade out um, to Nick Dacos. I still think with Zach Williams, I can just do it with another rookie like a, Shaden, uh, a Jaden Sharp. I almost said Shaden Sharp, all the basketball references here. Um, but yeah, I think Howes, I'm hoping he regains it so that gets some cheap, cheap marks. 
um, so that he, I can get him back and get him up to a Nick Dacos in like round seven, as I was saying. But anyway, that pretty much is my thoughts on that and sort of how I'm sort of tracking, how I'm already sort of planning my trades a little bit and um, sort of how I'm planning to get all these sort of premiums up as we really need I really hope Massimo goes big because that could be a real big downer if he doesn't go big and Powell goes big. Um, but anyway, that pretty much is the video and I'll see you guys in, I, I guess, the next one, which will be the, um, who plays first on, who plays first today? We got Bulldogs and Eagles in an hour 50. So I guess I'll see you guys in that video there. Bye guys.